This is chapter 12, Statistics. Section 12.1 is sampling frequency distributions and graphs. Now, one thing I do want to start off by saying is that a lot of the things we're going to be doing in this chapter are really easy to understand, but for whatever reason, it's hard to actually get done. Maybe because it's so easy, we're just very prone to making careless mistakes, but I have worked every problem I assigned to you guys, and I have figured out some tricks to help keep you from making those mistakes, so I'm going to be sharing those as we go along, okay? All right, a quote you probably heard at least part of before. Figures often beguile me, particularly when I have the arranging of them myself, in which case the remark attributed to Disraeli would often apply with justice and force. There are three kinds of lies, lies, damned lies, and statistics. And that's in Mark Twain's own autobiography. And yes, there's an asterisk there because even though we definitely know that Mark Twain wrote it, we don't know whether Disraeli actually said it. But still, lies, damn lies, and statistics. I'm sure you've heard that before. There are a lot of ways in which statistics can be used to obfuscate the truth. Sometimes the statistics are wrong, but more often it is how the information is presented that causes the problems. In section 8.1, we talked about how people misuse percentages. And since one of the ways we encounter statistics a lot are with polls, and poll result, results are given in percentages. And so when you start comparing results, you're talking about poll results. That is an area where percentages get misused a whole lot and they can be used to mislead, to mislead people. Okay. Um, sometimes people present two or more polls that appear to be measuring the same thing. However, when you give it a good look, you'll realize that you're being asked to compare apples and oranges. News stations and politicians in particular are often guilty of this one, and that's because political pollsters tend to collect their data by either questioning um, registered voters or likely voter voters. They are different populations, different groups, and so the, the data we get from that means different things. But these poll results all get released. All these different companies are releasing them at the same time. So you have two polls released on the same day. They pop them up and want to compare them, but they're measuring different populations. So that is something you need to be aware of. One of the goals of this whole chapter is to provide you with the tools you need to see through these ploys the next time someone is using statistics in a nefarious way. All right, now we need some definitions, uh, always. A population is the set containing all of the people or objects whose properties are to be described and analyzed by the data collector. So it's kind of like the universal set when we were back talking about set theory. When it is impossible or extremely impractical to gather data from every single member of a population, we instead get data from a sample of the population. A sample is a subset or a subgroup of that population. Uh, we need, in order to have good, reliable statistics, we need to have a random sample. And by that we mean that every single person or element in that population has an equal chance of being selected for the sample. We have to make sure that we're picking people in such a way that everybody has an equal chance. And then ideally of what technique is used to, create, uh, to get a random sample, we really want it to be a representative sample of the target population. The sample should exhibit this, the characteristics typical of those possessed by that target population. If you're polling an entire city, you know, you want to make sure that you had hit every major demographic in that city. You have everybody represented. One of the things that happens that happened with political polls is that what 
used to get a representative sample, no longer did in the 2016 national election. And that was partially, maybe primarily, the fact that they used to rely on calling landline telephones for, po for polls and did not make the adjustment for caller ID and then later people getting rid of landlines altogether. So the people they were able to reach to question by a phone poll really limited who could be chosen. So the results were not as reliable. Okay, so example problem, if I can turn the paper. Um, if you are the government of a large city and you need to determine whether the city's residents will support the creation of a new deal. The government decides to con conduct a survey of a sample of the city's residents. Which one of the following procedures would be the most appropriate for obtaining a sample of the city's residents? So let's survey a random sample, that part's good, of the employees and inmates at the old jail. Well, we need the whole city to pay for it, not just the people who live and work there. So most of the city is not going to be eligible to be chosen for this sample. So this is not a good random sample of, of, of the city. Okay, so not that one. Survey every fifth person who walks into City Hall on a given day. Well, that's every fifth person. That's pretty random. That would be equal chance, except for the fact that you have to go to City Hall. And the majority of members of a city don't go to City Hall often. Only people who work at City Hall, in which case they would have a much higher chance of being chosen or people who just happen to have business there that day could possibly be chosen. This one is also not good. Survey a random sample of persons within each geographic region of the city. That's pretty good. It's gonna hit the whole city. Every geographic region, then that means you're likely to hit the poorer regions and the more expensive regions. And then the, the ones that are dominated by um, minority groups or majority groups, you're just gonna have everybody represented there. This one's pretty good, but let's check this one just in case. Survey the first 200 people in the city's telephone directory. Well, well, if you can find a telephone directory, that's one thing. But also, this is a large city, and so probably the only people who could possibly be chosen is if your last name began with A, which of course does not mean every resident has an e is equally likely to be chosen. So this is not it. C is your answer here. That is your best choice. 